Kendrick Johnson was discovered deceased in January 2013, situated within a rolled-up gym mat at Lowndes High School in Valdosta, Georgia. The circumstances surrounding his death raise questions. Was it a tragic accident or something more malevolent? On January 11, 2013, the lifeless body of 17-year-old Kendrick Johnson was found in an extraordinary position, inverted and encased within a school gym mat. Initially, law enforcement classified Kendrick Johnson's death as accidental. However, his family remained skeptical. The preliminary autopsy indicated that Johnson succumbed to positional asphyxia, suggesting he suffocated after being trapped upside down in a confined space for a prolonged duration. Within just 24 hours of his discovery, investigators concluded that Johnson's death was accidental. The sheriff's department maintained that Johnson must have inadvertently fallen into the mat while attempting to retrieve a sneaker he had placed there to avoid locker fees. However, Johnson's parents believed that their son's death was not being adequately investigated, partly due to racial factors or the possibility of a broader cover-up. The mysterious death of Kendrick Johnson, the boy in the rolled-up gym mat. Kendrick Johnson resided with his family in Valdosta, Georgia, and was a student at Lowndes High School. His family and peers characterized him as a gentle and reserved individual. A talented athlete, he participated in three sports and aspired to pursue a career in professional football. Tragically, his aspirations were abruptly halted when his body was discovered by fellow students entering the gymnasium, rolled up inside a standing gym mat. His sneakers were found positioned behind his knees. Investigators swiftly concluded that Johnson had accidentally fallen into the mat while attempting to retrieve one of his shoes. Upon the initial unrolling of the mat, it was observed that Johnson had one arm extended above his head and the other positioned around his waist, suggesting he was struggling to reach for his sneaker. At that time, he was only wearing socks. Students informed the authorities that it was a common practice to leave personal items in the mats to avoid locker fees. The gym mat in which Johnson was located measured approximately six feet in height. When rolled, it created a central opening with a diameter of 14 inches. Johnson's shoulders measured 19 inches across and he stood five feet, 10 inches tall. It appeared feasible that if Kendrick attempted to fit into the center of the mat, he might have compressed his shoulders to reduce his width. However, his parents later argued that the disparity between his size and that of the mat was sufficient to refute the investigator's theory. Nearly a full day elapsed before Johnson was found. Given his inverted position, blood would have accumulated in his head, leading to potential bleeding from his facial openings. One of the most perplexing aspects of this case is the presence of a black and white gym shoe located on the ground beneath Kendrick Johnson. This shoe, which he was believed to be reaching for, rested atop a pool of blood. However, it bore no traces of blood itself. Additionally, a hoodie and a pair of orange and black gym shoes were discovered on the gym floor, accompanied by bloodstains on a nearby wall. Upon testing, investigators determined that the blood did not belong to Kendrick Johnson and suggested that it had likely been present for an extended period. Notably, the hoodie and the orange and black gym shoes were not collected as evidence by the investigators. Suspicions arise in the Kendrick Johnson case. From the outset, Johnson's parents harbored doubts regarding the investigation. They felt that the sheriff's department hastily dismissed the possibility of foul play in relation to Johnson's death as they reached the conclusion of an accidental death within just 24 hours of discovering Kendrick Johnson's body. The Johnsons were convinced that their son's body had been relocated 
a claim supported by Lowndes County Coroner Bill Watson. According to Georgia state law, the coroner must be notified immediately upon the discovery of a body. However, Watson stated that he was not informed until six hours had passed. Additionally, Johnson's parents contended that if this incident were indeed an accident, it was perplexing that no one in a high school with over 3,000 students heard Kendrick calling for assistance. Ultimately, they believed that their son's death was not being treated with the seriousness it deserved due to racial factors. Kendrick Johnson was black, while the Lowndes County Sheriff, Chris Prines, and his investigative team were all white. In 2013, the presence of racism in Valdusta, Georgia, was still evident, and the family's attorney, Chevenet King, asserted that had Kendrick been white, the case would have been approached in a markedly different manner. His family searches for the truth, the parents of Kendrick.